Welcome back to Hugging the Cactus, a Mel Gibson podcast. And today we cover Tequila Sunrise. It's not just a drink, it's an entire movie. And we are covering this in real time for because for a change, I don't have to call Nevada. I don't have to call Canada. I don't have to call someone in New Zealand. I'm in my own time zone. I'm in the Benelux. Welcome, Virginie. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. In fact, you're desperately needed. Tequila Sunrise, what was your first impression? Um, the cover of the movie um, was really 80s movie. So I thought I was going to, I was like, okay, that's that's the, the vibe I like, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, this is a really uh, nice vibe. And the um, the image, well, like, you have to look like a, a photograph. You know what I mean? Right. It's it, This is a really nice identity. Um, but then I thought it was going really slow to start the, the story. Did you mm-hmm. feel that or not? Yeah, yeah? it has its own I pace. Was, yeah, it has its own space. Yeah, and I was like, okay, are we going somewhere? Because when you see um, Mel Gibson, you're always like, okay, he looks good. He doesn't look like a retired um, drug trafficking guy. He looks like the father, the good one, and you want to like him. Actually, no? he looks like a real drug dealer. You because think drug so? dealers are always uh, usually handsome guys, and they're friendly, and because they're salesmen. Yeah, but I've uh, in my mind, okay, I get that. But they're the, they're mind, the fun guy at the party. Yeah, and everybody loves him because my, he has it, he has the stuff. Yeah, he has the stuff. But in my mind, um, when you have spent like uh, if it was his fifteen years doing that, it would be seen on your face. Like yeah. you would have mark and and the stress is still not him. You know, it, not him. <laughs> no. It was so um, I don't know affable. Um, yeah affable right. is the best word and I was, this just like it was like yeah you you retired you were in a really big business with a lot of stress and you have that pace yeah it's like the head of the mexican drug cartel is my best yeah. prison buddy i have no problems in this world yeah right oh and my other childhood friend is a cop and he's making and sure normal. nobody's arresting me yeah yeah my life is so amazing my life I had is good no uh, wrinkle because my life was so nice and so easy. Yeah. And that didn't really sit well to me with me. Um, well, there, there are a couple of things about his character that are a little off. Like he's he's almost childlike. Like mm-hmm. with this with the whole love affair, he's like the, the innocent yeah. partner in the in, in the threesome. The teenage guy. Yeah. He looks like a he, he acts like a teenage guy. He put himself way too much in danger for that. For mm-hmm. that. He just um like if like he forgot how to um, how to cover himself or to protect himself. Like if you have been in the in this business for that long, I mean you would have some kind of um, paranoia, trauma. Yeah, but you have like reflex and trauma and stuff that you will like be a little bit sus- suspect of everyone and ev- all the time. Like uh, uh, I thought that was missing of of that character. Yeah. You should have like the the past should come back to hunting. Yeah. Um, and that's actually interesting because that's an, a unique perspective you have because you're actually an actor. Yeah. I, so I, I was struggling you one, cannot watch I'm a normal one. you cannot watch a movie normally anymore. No, I, I this is a real difference when I started this uh carriage path, uh, is that uh I look at everything differently. I cannot enjoy a movie like just just lay back and be in the story. I I I watch how how is it made? How is um the character playing? I thought Mel Gibson was shortly not that great in that one, mm-hmm. and I don't know if it's the lack of um personal story of the character, like like we just said, mm-hmm. like you should have a little bit more of trauma <laughs> and stuff, um of or if it's him, but no, I I I'm kind of a Mel Gibson kind of fun. I think he's, he was really great in a lot of things. But in this one, I think he was a little bit um, just not where I was waiting for him to be. So I was like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I'm honest, um, because I'm French, I'm from Belgium, but I speak French. Um, uh, actor in an um, English movie always um, looks like they play better. I mean, the language the, the the helps them to look more convincing. I think 
than French one. Could I don't be. know if, yeah, I, I would or maybe so. because it's when you watch something in your own language. Yeah, um, you are more it takes you out of takes you out of the the suspension yeah. of disbelief. I have this when I watch Dutch movies. I can't watch them, and oh, yeah, I think okay. Dutch actors are terrible. You do? Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're just horrible, and uh, but it's probably because of the same reason. Um, yeah, it because I don't the have this problem with French movies. I okay, when, right? When I watch French or Spanish movies, I I love the acting in it. Uh, yeah, I think it's probably because of the language barrier. I Maybe to, I should you, try a Dutch movie. <laughs> I could. I don't recommend you. it. <laughs> Avoid it right. like a plague. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I will then. Yeah. I will trust your judgment. No, but well, to go back to Mel Gibson, and I thought the casting was great. I mean, you have like those are really good big uh, actor you have in the movie. It's like mm. they are not uh, one timer. They're not. They are already. This is star studded. Yeah, it's really star studded. It's it's you. Uh, this we have and, Kurt Russell. Yeah, I love Kurt Russell. I, I I'm really a love big him. Kurt Russell. And, he, buff. and he is good. And I he's great in say, it. Yeah, he's really he's really great. But and what I what I enjoy but, immensely about um, Kurt Russell's character is it, it's not the typical Kurt Russell you see. Normally he's like the handsome debonair guy, and here yeah. he's kind of a a sleaze bag. Yeah, he has his that's, hair slicked that, back, and he's supposed yeah. to be an honest policeman, but you can tell he's crooked. He's not, yeah. But uh, he then, lies uh, to everyone. To everyone, and he's like protecting his friend, and you're like, who's that good of a friend for you to protect him if he's that big of a used drug dealer? Mm. But yeah, I really like him, and he's really you can feel the the manipulation. You can feel the, and that's really well played from him i think it's like you you don't it's a crap so you want to trust him but you can't you, you just don't and so when the story uh and he's a snake he, yeah he's a really good snake like yeah. a, a really good one and that's the irony here because the the drug dealer is the most honest guy in the conversation yeah he's, he's, he's so the one trying to make good on and, yeah because he owes uh the the cartel guy money like yeah. a lot of it yeah. It's not really explained why, but you would assume. But still not stressed. <laughs> and not stressed. But then again, he trusts Carlos because once they finally meet, spoilers. Um, I, I can, we could discuss the story, but I don't think it's. You have to watch the movie for it because the the plot is just too complex. Yeah, it's really you have to follow it's it. It's very it's convoluted, like, yeah. but in a good way because it's actually well written. It's really clever. But I, you can't really explain the plot and do it justice. But um, spoiler alert! I, I just um, I have one thing about that that I really didn't like, and that just I think the voice you hear in the middle of the movie mm -hmm. that uh, I'm trying not to spoil too much that leaked to the end, mm -hmm. you can recognize it. True. So I got spoiled in the middle of the movie, and I was like, okay, that's that person. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah. yeah, and I was kind of disappointed. I mean, you should have changed the voice, even if that was not the yes. cell phone like we have, but you should have. Yes, because basically the cartel guy inserts himself into the investigation Yeah. Um, as a uh, Mexican federale with a whole bunch of guys who do not look like cops. No, not at all. And the FBI guy, we have to assume, is so dead set on capturing Mikusik, which is Mel Gibson's character, that he doesn't care or notice because he's been in contact with this guy. He's uh, yeah, he's blinded by his ambition almost, so blinded that he cannot see the obvious. Yeah, and when exactly. we hear his voice, it's like the obvious. Yeah, but it's full of like these clever little MacGuffins. Like for example, at the start of the movie, Mel Gibson is tipped off that this is a bust because yeah. he sees all these nuts lying on the floor because those are guys who are just around um uh, eating nuts while they're on surveillance because cops in at least in tv shows and movies are always eating always always <laughs> well i've noticed when i uh travel in the, in the united states americans are always eating so um maybe that's predictable but <laughs> however he sees a bunch of nuts and then he goes into the hotel and he sees even more on the stairway and, and, and on the fire escape. And he's like, yeah. oh, interesting. And he doesn't say anything, but he just sort of hints at the lawyer. Uh, apparently his lawyer uh, was paid off with drugs instead of money, which yeah. 
I guess can happen if you defend criminals, but yeah. it's not very smart because. Um, and if you into the into drugs, because if yeah. I was a lawyer, I was like, uh, no, give me the money. I don't give uh, mm, uh, about the the drugs. Yeah. you have to be like also yourself uh, already in it uh, well, yeah. in, in holland we have this famous lawyer um who always defends criminals called moskowitz and it's a really it was a really famous firm and they did some really major uh court cases even political ones and he was disbarred because criminals would pay him cash and he would not yeah uh, declare this to yeah. uh the government and uh you know, this but is kind of a similar situation. It's yeah, a, it's 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 stupid. I I understand you have to make money, and I understand that these criminals usually, um, uh, when they're under investigation, their money, their accounts will be frozen, so it's they don't frozen, have yeah. money, so they really can't pay their lawyer. But somehow they do. So in we this case, enough. Mel's lawyer got paid with drugs, a bunch of coke, and he's trying to sell it. And of course, he's selling it to. The police department, because this is America, and in America you can just pretend to be a criminal and uh, buy from other criminals, and, and that's, okay. that's considered legal. I mean, it's completely illegal here. It's 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 entrapment. You don't you can't. You it's, can't. No. No, you can't elicit someone into a crime. The the precedent of it is that that person might not have been a criminal, but you lured him into criminal behavior. Exactly. By posing as another criminal. I mean, if you if you drop money on the street, what are you going to do? You're going to pick it up. Yeah, but technically, probably. you have to, you bring, have it to, to bring it to the police. Yeah. Exactly. But Welcome if to you Europe, people. It, yeah. Welcome to the Benelux. We're normal, honest people. That's how we behave. Yeah. But... Small um, story, personal story. When I was uh, like a teenage, I found um, a really nice phone on the ground. Like the one that I could never afford when I was a teenage and uh, mm -hmm. my, my dad was with me. So I was so happy. Like, yeah, I found that amazing phone and dad look, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. My, my dad uh, made me uh, take it to the police and yes. give them to them. If someone Someone's came property. back. Oh my God. I was their, their family so pictures sad. are in there. <laughs> yeah. Right? But I was so sad because I was like, Oh no, I want to keep it. Yeah. You thought you <laughs> I, won the lottery. Yeah, exactly. But I didn't know I had Valuable to take lesson. it. Yeah, really want. And I didn't yeah. know at that time, because I was like 12 or something, that you couldn't keep it. That's nope. how I learned. Yeah. 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 But. But there in lawyer, America, I would have keep it. Mel Gibson's lawyer. Mm. Yeah. He even Crooked. betrays his own client. No, he's not good. <laughs> not good. <laughs> that, nobody's, going... nobody's honest in this movie nobody nobody but and i kind of enjoyed like, it because of that yeah because uh when you think about it uh and not you even look the at child no <laughs> manipulative <laughs> little true. bastard yeah but he grew up with a with a cartel dad so we can le let him have that that's, but, like well, my, that's my favorite anecdote in the movie it's like the the ex-wife um, yeah. who hits him up for a new Mercedes because he's a yeah. drug dealer. He can yeah, afford so it. Why not? And he's like, but it's under warranty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They said that. But, you know, they said something stupid about, you know, uh, it was without oil. She never changed yeah. the oil. The car's, uh, the car's like totaled now. <laughs> <laughs> she just destroyed an expensive the, the, Mercedes. Who cares? My, hus my ex-husband is Mac a drug dealer. A drug and so dealer, she's basically yeah. threatening him with, hey, if you don't give me money... I'm going to tell I'm, your kid you're a drug dealer. Yeah. She's also really nice. Welcome really to nice California, person. where yeah. everybody's an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> but the, in, in a case, in, in some way, it was refreshing because sometimes when you watch a movie, you're always like, that one is too perfect. You know, yeah. that one, that character is just too too nice or too too perfect to doesn't have like um i don't know how you say that in english like uh, uh, uh this um something crooked inside them something right. that they right. like that you can feel everyone is a little bit just, we all have a dark side yeah we all have yeah. one and we try to not use it or try to just make it uh, uh shut up yes but, this uh, is one of those shades of gray movies there's no yeah. good or bad here there's no yeah, good or exactly. evil it's just people going through yeah. stuff and the, the, exactly. the curious thing about this movie is that the Mel Gibson character is almost childlike in the love affair. Yeah, he's acting like a child. He's just, and you would think he would have more common sense of 
how to protect himself. That that would that one really bothered me. Yeah, but love makes like, you do stupid things. That's the that's the theme of the movie. Yeah, but but I I get that. But he's not a um, a sixteen year old. Yeah, you can do stupid thing, but you can also just think a little bit more. But but, but maybe with uh, sorry, <laughs> but maybe with uh, if I had uh, Michelle Pfeiffer in front of me, I would be acting stupid too because that one she yes. she has charisma like no one ever, and you're like okay, yeah, I we can give she's him a that. Man, she's a woman. Men will make fools of themselves for. Her. Yeah, and she in the movie she's not just a beauty. That is what I like about the character. She's not just the pretty girl. She's also really strong, really strong-minded. Mm -hmm. And then, well, she doesn't. Also, she she doesn't act uh, really well. Not uh, in the acting sense, um, in the character sense, but she um, has a personality. She's, like, yeah, she's kind of aloof. Yeah, and very self-protective in the sense. Um, More because... than him. And distrustful, which yeah, is, I think, him. what women in, uh, in California general. have to be, yeah. because that's a, a, a horrible, horrible, horrible place. It is. I never understand why people enjoy Los Angeles so much. Much it must be the weather, or the, yeah, the, I the went palm to... trees. Yeah. <laughs> and the intense amounts of money you can make there in the uh, um, in the entertainment industry. But okay, so this woman is a restaurateur. Yeah. And she drives a really nice car. And she has expensive chefs. So this is an upper class restaurant. Yeah. Or um, yeah, a restaurant, we should say. <laughs> if you uh like TV chefs, <laughs> it's a wonderful restaurant. And I don't think the dishes were particularly spectacular, but then again, this was 1988, so maybe sensibilities were different back then. Yeah. Uh, because I they're just so eating linguini. Um, and, it, and, it's in the, and they're the, eating it like it's oh it's like, like yeah a, a, a orgasm in my mouth and it's just so good and but we are not from the united i think for the united states maybe it's, it's better not Belgian, but we, is it? <laughs> no. yeah no we have different taste buds i think yeah. in, in europe uh, like well belgium yeah. particularly because it's belgium kitchen is haute cuisine yeah it's like the French mix between stuff, yeah. Um, yeah. basically center, Central European and French cooking. And so yeah, exactly. it doesn't get any better than that. Maybe <laughs> Italian, maybe. Maybe Italian, yeah. You have to give them that. Yeah, yeah Northern Italian, not Southern. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, so she has a restaurant and she's very successful because those little plates, they have very little food on them. And yeah. they're probably expensive. <laughs> so she drives a nice Porsche. She she doesn't look like she she would need a man. I mean, she to doesn't. to be sex, sex no. successful, she she would. You you. I, I think at first you wouldn't think she would get herself in that situation. I mean, you're like, okay, no, she's she's strong minded. She has a own business. She mm -hmm. she has a nice car. She, how how can yes. she? But she's a woman. She has needs. Yeah, yeah. Right. We can give her that. Yeah, right. And uh, there, it's not like she doesn't have plenty of men around her because this, no. there's the there's the bossy bartender. Yeah, that kind of confused me because at the start of the movie he felt like uh, I don't know a jealous boyfriend, and halfway through they sort That's of explain her, his boss. You're like, or that he yeah, but he's, he's not the boss. He's he's no, basically the employee. She, but he acts yeah. like the boss because he's the, he's the experienced bartender. He exactly. knows all the clients and he knows what they're up to and he has a good judge of character. He's actually the smartest and most honest wife. guy yeah. in in the entire movie. I really like Arturo, and. So at halfway through, um, they he's lured away from the restaurant. Uh, or no, she's lured away from the restaurant because Arturo yeah, called she's... his wife is sick. And I was like, oh, he's married. This is a decent guy. And he ha he's protective of his boss because that way he protects the restaurant. And that's his job. Yeah. And we're have, we have a good thing going here. Stop messing with these horrible guys. Both of them are crooks. Stop this. That he's basically the voice of reason in her life. Yeah, and she doesn't he listen. really is. She doesn't know. No. Yeah. Which brings me to Joanne. Girl, you already <laughs> brought her up. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. She's an interesting character in the sense that she's tough and she's very aloof and she's a little nasty because she doesn't. She's say a nice little things. nasty. Yeah. She she has a spike as a mouth. She just. Yes, and dominant yeah, men do love that stuff. Yeah. Because when you're used to submissive women. A woman who isn't, who is a little, yeah, who is really desirable but impossible to get. It's it, that's like a magnet. 
that's when you fall as a man. It's like, oh, okay, all my um, alpha male defenses have uh, yeah. gone to the wayside. I'm uh, this must happen, and she knows it. <laughs> she has this look in her eyes, like I know what you want. You're just not going to get it. Yeah, and of course they get like it. that. Yeah, and of course she sleeps with both of them. Of course, it's, yeah, it's like not. This, So here we have the little threesome going. And yeah. Nick, the policeman, is into Joanne. So the minute she realizes, oh, he isn't really a bad boy. No, he's, he's a nice just one being inside. bad to get what yeah. he wants. He's selfish. Oh, well, now I'm not interested in it anymore. And he yeah. gets the cold shoulder. She actually dumps him in her own restaurant. Yeah, that was that was really uh, cringy. You were like, oh. Oh, you're thinking, oh, oh poor Kurt. No, poor guy. Yeah. How does this happen to Kurt Russell? Yeah. How is this possible? Exactly. You're like, oh, no, 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 no. I thought that was really well done. No, it was really well done. I yeah. think so, too. Yeah. It because was cringy, she... but you were like, okay. And, oh, yeah. You didn't see it coming. So you're like, oh, my God. This yeah, that's embarrassing. Acting. Yeah, that, yeah. It was this good is acting. really good acting because you just felt the cringe. You felt the subtle letdown. Yeah. It's like, no, and the you disappointment crossed the line here. And, and the... Uh, he was surprised, but also disappointed. And was, he, he kind of was like, how does this happen to me? Like, mm -hmm. me? How is it possible? And you were like, okay, guy, you, you kind of deserve it a little yes. bit, but yeah. You put yourself out there, buddy. Yeah. With the wrong woman. Then this yeah. is what happens. Exactly. He's got, he got eaten alive. Yeah. So Which fast. kind of made me, at that in that scene, it made me really worried for, for Mac. For the Mel Gibson character, I was like, oh, you have no Ooh. idea what this woman is. Mm. Because she's portrayed the entire movie as this, like, um, victimized, uh, um, how shall we put this? A vulnerable woman. No, no, she isn't. She really isn't. Yeah, she, She's just an idiot because she puts herself in, in, in really, mm. really dangerous situations. But you have to think, like, does she like the... The, the situation or the, is she that naive you know i i, I didn't uh i couldn't no, she's really... way too smart for that i think she's yeah. nuts okay yeah you yeah. think she's like kind of toxic like she likes it she, she's she just she gives that gives her butterfly she she like the adrenaline adrenaline of it yes yeah. so halfway through the movie i was thinking oh mel don't stick your dick in crazy <laughs> don't go Please there. Don't. she's not worth it yeah I, 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 uh, she's not an angel yeah she's pretty but that's, that's kind of yeah. it just but that's that's how we fall it's like we yeah. see this pretty pretty thing and it's all shiny and, and yeah and we add like all these elements to it oh she's gonna be this and she's gonna be that and yeah and projection a lot of projection we project yeah. and it's usually mommy issues <laughs> yeah. it's that's mommy true. issues it's like uh, mommy didn't love us enough so when women behave aloof to you mommy's love is being withheld yeah uh, and that's what creates this need in guys like that. And they become so, so, so pathetic. So attached. And so, yeah. yeah. And they uh, go all we, in. Yeah. And Mel is sort of, he's a drug dealer. So he's paranoid. So um, he prefers to love from afar. Yeah. Normally. He Which I think to, is, yeah. a, to a degree, something we all do at some point in our lives. So he's in that restaurant every day. Not for but food. That, that when I, that's what I was saying about uh, not protecting himself. Like, you, how can you not see that you are projecting an, an habit that you can be traced? That you can, if yeah. normally, I, yeah, that, that was just that's and the that, FBI is onto it. Yeah, so fast, but They're they have to because to it in the rest, yeah. How can you can you miss that? He's going there every day. Once he even goes like once or twice, two times a day. So you're like, yeah, you're gonna find him there. Just. I could be a the FBI with that guy, you know what I mean? Like, to, yeah, well, it, not that how to follow. The, the uh, FBI first. in the movie is dumber than the police. <laughs> it's true. Which is, that's I don't think that's a reality. No, I don't from think what so. What I understand, um, uh, basically, FBI guys are scientists, so yeah, university trained, and uh, policemen are um, of average intelligence, most of them. 
Mm. So it's mostly um, knowledge and experience gained from work in the field, whereas the FBI is more theoretical. So they're going to yeah, be very that's strategic why you have more, about everything. Yeah. And they're going to double check everything. So that's why I, I I really doubt in reality a subterfuge that some um, mob boss is going to pull on the FBI could actually work. Because I don't think... No, that, I think so. Yeah, I, I don't think so too. No, no. it wouldn't so work. So this, this guy must have been working outside of boundaries because exactly. he's untrustworthy. He's a bad FBI guy. And yeah, that's exactly. like this, this entire movie is kind of saying evil is just here. This Everywhere. entire place yeah. makes everyone corrupt. Yeah. Like you have this beautiful, beautiful place with palm trees and nice sunsets and beautiful cars and pretty people and great food. And it's cor- and just corrupting every day. everybody. Yeah. This kind isn't, of the- it, isn't that like in my mind, um, um, it's like, that's what I think about L.A., like in my mind, it's a cor- corruption place. Like yeah. I don't know why, but it's also. But when you I get there, the it's it's empty and boring. I went once, but just for a few days, and I didn't like the city. It was too too much of a city. It it's was loud. Yeah, it was loud. It was. I thought it was really um, uh, dirty, but um, in the sense of um, not Dilap- clean, like dilapidated yeah. and unkept. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Unkept. I yeah, was like, I was really. Um, in the movies, they only they show us the pretty parts. Yeah, just the pretty parts. Just the pretty parts, and when you're there, and you have to take the you're bus. Like, exactly. Or you just have to walk on the street, and you're like, okay, that's not clean. Like, yeah, you don't see that in the movie. You see Helle like with sun and just. You're uh, just stepping uh, over homeless people, and and yeah, uh, that's a, that's awful. The, the so usual sad. debris. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's peculiar. Yeah, it's good, the but, minute yeah. you get out of the center, it's like you're in a different city because that's exactly. where people live. And yeah. people in California uh, are desperate to space. live in California, apparently. Yeah. And that's what you see. You see this like immense desperation everywhere. And yeah. I, 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 I never understood it. No, I don't. Either. Yeah, but then again, I, I got some, I have some real bad experiences in LA. And like the first time I went there was just scary. And I um I hitchhiked from one part of the United States to yeah, California to because uh, I I was training to be a personal trainer, and so I got my certificate and um I didn't have any money, so I just hitchhiked. That's what you do when you don't have money. Uh, <laughs> so I had a basically stu- a student loan, and so I had enough money to either eat, sleep, or travel. Yeah. So I usually would combine the travel and the sleeping because you could get on a Greyhound. And nice sleep. thinking, yeah. Um, uh, or or you could eat, and then I'd buy t- tuna fish, little cans of tuna yeah, fish. Yeah, cans of tuna fish, yeah. Yeah, they work. And and drink water. That's basically tuna fish and water diet. So I this or that. And then I tried to get jobs at gyms to coach people free so I could train. Yeah, so I went through the United States like that. And so the end part was I took the train to L.A. So I got off the train at the train station. And I was like, I mean, it was late at night and it was deserted and there were still people there, but you couldn't see them. And then this guy started singing to me. Singing. white boy. (gasps) Oh, my God. (sighs) And it just, it was like this voice. I was like rushing out of the station. And it was like this voice was following me and singing to me. It's like, we're going to do shit to you. And yeah. I was like, oh, fuck me. I'm so screwed. Yeah. What am I doing here? This was stupid. Yeah. And you're a man. Yeah. And and you were, a, a, um, you have a muscle and you you look like a like a real man and a strong one. And and still that you, you felt yeah, that. Yeah, but you're, you're just yeah. you. And that's yeah, and you're white in, in a part of the city that um, basically yeah. you're an endangered species. Mm. People always talk about white privilege. Really? Okay. Enjoy your white privilege in the interesting, sketchy parts of uh, South Central LA. And you see how white privilege, how far that gets you there. It doesn't. Well, yeah. to a degree. When I went to, to a degree, yeah. Yes. When I went to Atlanta, this is a funny story. Uh, I wanted to go to um, a couple of museums. And one of them was on Dr. Martin Luther King. So, because I was a big fan. I loved his speeches. I was like, ah, I'm going to go, go, go to the museum. So I went to the museum, you know, because I'm one of those European intellectual guys who goes to museums and, you know, one of those. And so you have to pass through an interesting part of town. And so, of course, I'm European. So I take the bus or I take 
or I walk or something like that. So I'm walking down the street and a cop car drives up from behind me and it goes, woo, and it shines the lights on me. Sir, get into the car. I'm like, what? You don't expect it to be you because I never get arrested for anything. So I look around, I see the cop car and I was like, you know how you go? Like you point your chest like me, sir, get in to our car right now. And I'm like, okay, I'm in trouble now. So I get into the car. They drive me back. So where's your hotel? They drive me back to my hotel and berate me, berate me throughout the drive. You cannot just go here. You cannot just travel through here. Are you insane? We we are, we are not going to pick your body out from the gutter. That's no. You you tourists have to stop doing this shit. And I'm like okay. okay. Oh sorry. But yeah. I just wanted to go to the museum. <laughs> Oh my god, that's weird. Yeah. No, it's it's um the the police in America are very scary. It's yeah, I, they I are. don't I don't really blame Americans for being afraid of their own police force because they're very scary. They're they're very intimidating, which is ironic because one of my uh, podcast co-hosts is a cop and he's great and we're great friends. No, attends, je suis occupé. Quand j'ai fini, je viens. Sorry. No worries. Menace emanating from them. It's yeah. Like, in Europe, I'm used to if I'm in trouble or if I have to know the road or if you just walk you can up to ask, a cop yeah. and you just chat. You just, uh, and yeah. it's just, you know, they're people. Well, maybe not at a demonstration. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> maybe not. That's a different kind, you know. But that's like everywhere. You have bad one, you have nice one. Yes. You can, it depends on the person. Like, have, yeah, exactly. You have to read the room. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we have to ask ourselves how they how did it get like that? I mean, what what they encounter to feel like that, to feel like they have to be uh, just that um, vindictive all the time. Yeah, it's police you know? culture. Yeah. It's basically the, the police become their own country and they have their own set of rules and they don't consider consider themselves part of the country. They consider themselves Above part it. of the, the, the group of blue. Yeah, okay. And it's us yeah, against it's a, them. Yeah, it's a, a family. Yeah. It's like a mafia, it. like yeah, you like have, the mafia. Yeah, it's one of the things I liked about. Uh, have you ever seen Luc Besson's Taxi? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So you have the taxi driver, and uh, he's explaining to some tourists, it's like, oh yes, we have a lot of gang problems here. There's a really big gang here, yeah. and they wear blue caps, which is a French joke. That's the police. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here we have this interesting police culture. It's the same thing. You have a lot of scenes in the police station where uh, Nick Frisia is having is butting heads with the FBI who has set up in his office. And yeah. of course, he just got promoted. He's now a lieutenant. Yeah. And you can tell he's a lieutenant now because he can get, get this new name on the door. And he's yeah. more interested Privilege. in all the things accompanying his new uh, position. Than yeah. actually doing his doing job. the job, yeah. <laughs> because he's picking out wallpaper, and he has like a new desk, and his girlfriend, the restaurant owner, calls, and he's just setting up a date for himself. And hey, man, and he tells everybody, "Hey, I'm working, I'm working," and he's sort of working because yeah, he sort of yeah, he does get her uh, birthday uh, the her party list for Max son's <laughs> birthday party, yeah, which he doesn't realize it's, it's the son's birthday party, but still. There's this entire subtext and there's this entire uh, layer of uh, everybody knows what everybody's doing, but they're all using it for their own, to further their own ends. Yeah, exactly. Nick just wants to bang the restaurant girl and just wants as much free time as possible and just wants to get away with everything and uh, have fun with doing everything. it. everything, yeah. He's and he, he gets how it works. You, you see that he knows how to get it that it's just like it's not it's not a newbie it just he's the perfect little californian isn't he yeah exactly yeah <laughs> so here you have mac who doesn't sound californian this is still in uh, mel gibson's um i'm still a little bit australian face because you can actually tell from his yeah his that is like, that from oh, okay. there yeah hmm. and he's a little off here and there because that's one of the charming things about mel gibson is that he has this very offbeat way of acting the only person um who i think is even more offbeat is what's that guy's name nicholas cage oh okay i see yeah. what you mean he, he yeah. also has kind of this weird streak in him yeah like you you um when you watch nicholas cage you wonder when uh when he's going into overacting mode when he, he's going into shift into nick cage crazy right yeah a little too far 
Yeah. yeah. And that makes him entertaining because his movies are always fun because of that. And here you have Mel Gibson, who has kind of that same thing. It's kind of like you never really know how he's going to react to certain situations as, yeah. as the character, which um, that makes it an, and that makes it an interesting take. So you as an actor, you have to work off a person like that. Yeah. Right? So you're in a scene and you're you're filming a scene with this guy and he does something you really don't expect. He's just sort of ad-libbing. Yeah. He's changing the script. He's changing his 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 character on the fly. He's just trying yeah. something new. How do you deal with that? You go for it. You you just you you keep in mind who you are supposed to be and you go for it because I think that um if you want to be a, a great actor, if you want to, you have to understand that the first rule and you are just there to listen. Because if you listen to the other person, you are um, reacting to it. So when someone changes the what you were supposed to see, what you were supposed to see happens, it gives you place to react. And that's how you get good and you get a nice scene, I think. I think so, because you have to do the scene over and over. So sometimes it gets really mechanical and to mm-hmm. get out of that uh it's really great when some someone just changes a little bit or ju- just do something that you were not expecting so you you are better because you have a new reaction to it and mm-hmm. then i think it's the director choice to uh, keep it or not in the movie and to to stay mm-hmm. with that or, or not and to um to try to experience experiment pardon, sorry mm-hmm. uh with that if it suits what he was expecting of the character so mm-hmm. i think that yeah you have to react i think you you for me you never you should never be acting you should always be reacting and even though you know what the other people is going to say because you have normally read the script and learn it you have to just f- try to forget it and just react to how the person is going to say it how they are going to move and mm-hmm. just let your body and your mind just react to it like you would be with a with someone you didn't know with, with someone that you didn't you cannot never know what they are going to say and that's mm. i think how you deal with that okay so I here you so. are you instead of Michelle Pfeiffer, you are sandwiched between uh, Kurt Russell, <laughs> who, has a, who has a certain acting style, yeah. and Mel Gibson, who is completely unpredictable. Yeah. What would life be like? I think it it it, it would be really fun because you would be uh, always um, surprised and never being able to predict. And if you cannot predict, you cannot just decide how you're going to act. You know, when mm-hmm. you read a script, you have in your mind, because you are a person, you you can, um, when you read it, you you act it in your mind. Like you kind of see the scene, you can see the scene in your mind, you can see how you're going to say stuff and how you think it's going to be and how you think it's going to move. And if you get on the the in front of the camera and you do exactly that, you are going to be so bad. Because it's already you already have re- rehearsed it, so you're going to be mm-hmm. so bad. So when you play with someone that's unpredictable and someone that has a certain style, you just have to let the space for them to do their stuff and for mm-hmm. you to just forget everything you thought you are going you are going to be and just be in the moment, be present, and just listen and react to them. And so that's I think if you have two actors like that in front of you, you are going to be better. Mm-hmm. You are going to be good because you are going to to have a, a genuine reaction because you were you weren't expecting it. So mm-hmm. I think that's what makes you great. If you play with someone and you can um ex- you can uh, you you can see what they are going to do next, you don't react anymore. You know, mm-hmm. you, so you're like, and you're going to do something you think you should do, and then you're bad. You're really bad mm. because it will look like you you already knew what what was going to happen. Like like when someone um, in real life, when you come to someone and you know they are going to lie to you and you know what they are going to say mm-hmm. and you have to fake it. Like, oh, no, really? I, you know, yeah. you have to act like you don't know. You always look yeah. really your bad. Your body language yeah. is already communicating. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. And that's I so think you, the you same. basically you turn in a, uh, a kind of a false performance. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of interesting when you look at the choices that uh, Michelle Pfeiffer makes because she's in between these guys. Yeah, and she has to sort of remain true to her character, but they both both play 
very differently and the scenes are have a very different energy yeah and and that's when i started started to think i mean this is a great writer who is also the director robert tiny i mean he's he was a script writer for decades and decades so this was like his first great project uh, and you could tell it it had to make money it yeah had to, it this had to be a success you could tell this was his big money grab it's like okay i have i have a, the perfect script so i now need the perfect stars who will attract an audience yeah. I, uh, they have to put in uh, great performances and it had all has to look great and look good because this the movie this, i think look good it's pretty they have to look good the scenes have to yeah. look, you can see how meticulously these all these scenes are built yeah. and sometimes they don't make sense like for example at some point mel gibson and kurt russell char- characters have a heart to heart where they're they're in the scene they're basically lying to each other uh they're on this because they're they, they're constantly they have this tension of i know you're a drug dealer uh, I, know, I know you're yeah. a bad cop you're a crook yeah how bad of a cop are you are you gonna uh, uh they're testing each other's loyalty yeah throughout the movie. to a friendship yeah to the yes. friendship yeah. yeah because the 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 real theme of this movie is bros before hoes yeah and so you have kurt russell and mel gibson and they're they're sitting in the sunset the tequila sunrise or sunset whatever you yeah. want to call it it <laughs> it has that 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 cocktail look and they're sitting on the swings now i'm a man you don't sit on swings you don't know where that's been you know, you, it's no, you don't, you, you don't want to, there are children playing on that and, and druggies are sitting on that. And you, you don't want to be on those swings because they're filthy, dirty. You want to get your clothes dirty. You just don't. And not those men. Like you. maybe you not those. Like, well, yeah. I think Nick, he likes his suits. So he wouldn't be no, yeah, sitting. That's what I mean. You, no, those Brett? men are too, too, too clean to, they would be, well, yeah, I, I get yeah. that. Yeah, because you know, because uh, Dale McCusick, or, or that's what it's called, I think, Mel's character lives on the beach. Yeah. And so you know that whenever he's making a phone call with Carlos on the beach, so they, the cops can't listen in, exactly why they weren't listening on a public phone, I don't understand, because you can just no, listen to that. Either. But okay, yeah. you can why tap not? it, but hey, who cares? So he's on the beach talking to um, whoever, and he's always in different clothes, because why not? When you live on the beach, you can just change clothes if you want. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> so he's very clean. And so is Nick. And they're sitting on these dirty swings. And my mind is going, and it's like, this wouldn't happen in reality. It's it's so funny to hear that because it didn't cross my mind. I was like, okay, I was just going with it. Okay, I've seen, too many, I've seen it too many times. That's yeah, the thing. I know. I understand that. And yeah. now that you're saying, I'm like, yeah, that's true. They wouldn't be on the swing. like No. But, but the I scene never thought about is it. Yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it's really nice. I mean, they're, they're basically, you can't really see their faces. So you don't really know if they're lying. They're just saying stuff to each other. Yeah. So you really have to focus in on the dialogue, which is something the, the, uh, the writer finds important. And the movie maker wants to have a pretty picture. And the combination of the two makes that <laughs> scene. And it's a really interesting scene. Very important to the plot. And it's completely convoluted. And it, it, it's really and different. To me, from, that's the entire yeah. movie. I, I get that because it's really, it's it's a moment that just, it, it doesn't look like the rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. It, it makes you like, you have to watch that one. If you should watch one, you should watch that one. That that yeah. scene is, is, but it's is very, saying it, something I mean, more. Yeah, That scene is what the, uh, basically what the poster promises. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. This is what you're going to get. You're going to get stars. You're going to get pretty scenes. You're going to get an exciting story. Yeah. And, it's, and it, you can say what you want about this movie, but the story is great. It's it's it, You could say the plot's convoluted. You could say it's hard to follow. You can say, well, mm, but the dialogue is good. The story is good. It's a it's a good watch. I really enjoy this. I just yeah. do. It's clever. It's a re- and, and Americans don't make clever movies all that often. So no, I'm always true. happy. When I get that, it's it has that sort of uh, basic they, they, instinct yeah. cleverness about it. Yeah, they, they didn't went for the easy one. I mean, no. sometimes you you watch a movie, uh, an American one, and you're like, okay, that that was easy. This that, could that just was been, cheap. This yeah. could all have been running and shooting, and car yeah. chases. And that's you think you're going to watch a like like a movie with a lot of um, a battle scene, mm-hmm. and there isn't really. 
one big one. I mean, I was I was expecting something more, but it's more about the people. It's more about the 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 relationship. And I, when I, I started watching, I didn't think it was going to go that way. These things are tricky to make because it's ba basically a love affair of people who just met. Yeah. And so it that promises sex because Always, when, yeah. when you've just met, um, yeah. that's the first thing you want to do. You want to get physical as fast as possible. Cause, so that's what it's promising. Yeah. And it, it kind of reminded me of there's this other movie earlier in the 80s, which was Against All Odds, which oh, is I didn't famous. See that. It's it's famous for the song. Because Phil uh, Phil Collins made a hit song about it. Okay, I didn't see that. I'm gonna Google it. Against yes, all should. odds. Against all odds, and it's it's with great actors. I mean, oh, it's yeah. with great actors. But this movie succeeds where that one fails. It's yeah. just the same exact same thing. It's a love triangle, pretty people, uh, in a in pretty places, uh, with great music, with great shots, with a decent story. Oh, yeah, but okay, this movie yeah. um, has chemistry where Against All Odds doesn't. Didn't, okay. Yeah. And Against All Odds has like, uh, because the main character it loves speed. He's a, a professional football player and he loves fast cars. And he does everything. Everything is a competition for him. So getting the woman is a competition to him. That's the theme, kind of the theme of the movie. And okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay to just watch once, but uh, uh, this uh, tequila sunrise thing is that you can just put it on and start cooking. Yeah, which is what I did. I'm just cooking and just had tequila sunrise on, and it's it's pretty to look at. And at some point, you just sort of the scenes are comforting. Yeah, and it didn't age that bad. I think. no, not was, at all. You can feel the vibe, and it stay the same. And yeah. They were kind of going for that kind of 50s feel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. With kind of, and so it's an enjoyable movie just for that. And so uh, I'm really happy to cover it because of that, because it's fun. It's not, it's, it's not insulting your intelligence. No, it's not. <laughs> um, it's just the only thing that really annoys me, and that's judgmental. Yeah. Is Michelle Pfeiffer's character. Because she's the femme fatale. Uh, yeah. She has to be a strong person because these are alpha males butting heads over her. Yeah. And they're childhood friends. And these guys care more about each other at this point than they do her. Except Mel's character is deeply, deeply in love. To the she, point yeah. that he oh, kills his friend over her. Because his friend, yeah. his criminal friend says, look, she's a witness. She knows too much. We have to kill her, buddy. We have to kill her. Yeah. And we're just going to sit here and talk about this until you agree with me. Right? Which is, this is bros before hoes. Essentially. Yeah, it's just that. Just that. And yeah. on the other hand, there's the cop uh, uh, who's not on the boat, who also has a stake in this, who also enjoys the company of Joanne. Yeah. But he's like, he has the different bros before hoes because there's always when a man loves a woman. When you see that your friend is in love with a woman... You take a step back and you yeah. just give him space to make mistakes because you realize, well, you know, okay, yeah, this is he's important. Not in control. Yeah, he's... So basically what you do when your friend is in love with a woman you disapprove of or that you want for yourself is you just give up. You just give her up. It's like, okay, this is important to him. It's obvious. This Never will wreck mind. our friendship yeah. if I, you know, you don't get in between a man and a woman, not when it's real. So you just sort of take a step back and you just sort of be, I don't know, the voice of reason maybe is like, hey, yeah. watch out. Okay. Just, you know, think about you first. Think about your kid. Think about et cetera. So um, that's really the, the the difference between the two friendships. Whereas the one is... Uh, Carlos is into Mac. He's that's their their jail yeah. buddies. They went through a lot of stuff. They probably saved each other's lives. They had each other's back. Um, yeah, you can feel that that they have yes. they have a story. Yeah, and yeah. Carlos is because it's, Raul Julia is a great actor. Yeah. He's so amazing. I just love him in everything he's ever done. 
and he's so charismatic. You have yeah. something when you, you see him, you're like, okay, yeah, no, he's, he's really great. Yeah. yeah, you'd be into him, right? I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's your kind of <laughs> guy. I figured out. <laughs> I figured it out. Anywho, so here you have the friendship between Carlos, which is criminal and violent yeah. and yeah. Uh, warm and intense and scary and all those things. And on the other hand, you have the childhood friends who have a deeper understanding of each other, who yeah. have a loyalty to each other mm -hmm. uh, that is questioned throughout the movie, but is rewarded in the end. And in between, you have Michelle Pfeiffer's character. Yeah. She's, who she's... plays with one and also plays with the other and decides which one she wants and then just sort of pulls commitment from him. Yeah, exactly. She, she, Yeah, she went for it. Yeah, she went for it. I mean, that's yeah, and so it, that's interesting in terms of acting choices, and because here's this aloof woman, and she's finally decided, okay, this is the this is the alpha male I want, who will this be one, strong yeah. enough to even even deal with me and protect yeah. me. Yeah. So what's what are your thoughts on that? Um, I'm trying to think about it because I I just. I think she's um but she's not well written so as an yeah, actress you have to sort of find to ways to make she's, it believable right Yeah and she's always um she doesn't stand on her two feet mm. uh, the character I mean you 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 couldn't I mean if you uh, let me put it in another way mm -hmm. you could make a sequel about uh, Meg Gibson uh, character you could mm -hmm. make a sequel about Kurt Russell character you could mm -hmm. take both and uh have a whole movie about their life how they got there and mm -hmm. stuff and and you can uh, make how they are going to move forward you with the information we have in the movie you could do that because mm -hmm. you, you are into them and they have a, a really strong uh well-written character she mm -hmm. doesn't you're like okay we have like five info about her like mm -hmm. you you know that she's strong yeah because she acts like like it and it's okay she's um she's a business owner okay fine and she's pretty it's mm. not even it's not even five it's it's three and i think that uh in a lot of movie it's going to to it's better now but for a lot of times when you have the the the, the, the female character in movies mm -hmm. they don't give them substance she doesn't have substance you you know what i mean yes you... i know what you mean and i suspect this is because the writer slash director yeah just does not understand women Exactly. Just does not understand them. He couldn't do anything else. Yeah, exactly. And she's There's, just. I mean, how many women are in this movie? Face. How yeah. many women? One, one and a half. Two, Two yeah. You Two. Have, there's and, the, yeah. Um, the ex wife, mm -hmm. and there's the girlfriend, the restaurant owner. Yeah. Right? And, and the ex wife they, is horrible. Yeah, and, and you don't know why she's horrible. I mean, you, you don't have uh, anything well, she had about a, her. You just. Uh, okay, so she uh, she's materialistic. Um, yeah, okay, like that's what the people. movie tells yeah. you. She uh, is not a good parent. Yeah, in in the way they presented her. Yeah, yeah. She's the typical ex-wife who just wants money from her. But she's, she's a cliche, you know. She's she a doesn't trope, have a cliche. She's a cliche. She, mm -hmm. you, you, she doesn't have like. Uh, and um, when you're a bad writer and yeah. you don't understand something, you write a cliche. Yeah, exactly. But to be honest, Joanne is a cliche too. Mm -hmm. You know, she she really is. You are like she, it's lacking something. It's like it's a woman substances. that doesn't really exist. She's yeah, she's a pretty woman, strong, and that and that's 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 it. And you and she's strong, but you don't know why. I mean, she, they she never explain why. She's yeah, what, why is this? Why, you why assume. Is she, yeah, and she's strong, and you 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 know they want you to think that she's strong, but she really isn't that strong because mm -hmm. she is looking for that man to rely on, but you don't know where it comes from, and I I, I don't I think it's it's um it's really really hard. Uh, it, Michelle Pfeiffer, she's there to um she's pretty to be honest, she's she's that face of the movie mm -hmm. because they needed a pretty face for the uh, shower scene for uh but they don't give yeah, the hot tub her... scene oh, yeah the hot tub, yeah, so, the hot tub scene the... which we didn't talk about yet no no yeah okay <laughs> but they they don't give her the the she doesn't have much to do to act she doesn't have much to act no. she doesn't have to to build a person she doesn't have to build a character she doesn't have to change anything about her she just she can come on set and be 
kind of her with another line, mm-hmm. and what she projects is enough. Yes, for and- Mel Gibson, it's not. They, for Kurt Russell, uh, it's really not because he's different than what you see him normally mm-hmm. in, and they, they he had to build a, a, a person, a, a character. She didn't. Yeah. And I don't think she was interested in doing it. I have no idea. I think she didn't have the space to do it. Well, apparently, she went through a divorce during shooting. At that time? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know right that. Right through. So she wasn't happy. She got into arguments with the director, probably over some of the things you're saying. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So this was very argumentative. This was, and you can tell from her performance because it's a little wooden. Yeah, it's a little wood. Yeah, she's I, fine I with she's in scenes with Kurt. She's fine when she's in scenes with Mel because, because she reacts. You can tell she can just react, and she, yeah. uh, I, 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 you can tell she, you know, there's uh, professional respect, right? But yeah. in the rest, she's just okay. Did we get our makeup done? Is my hair okay? Okay, let's do the scene. That's it. Kind of yeah. feels very uh, go by the motion, go through the motions kind of thing. Yeah, I get that. Which yeah. kind of brings us to the hot tub. The hot tub scene. And yeah. we're talking about a movie that is all about imaging. It's all about shooting the right image and projecting yeah. the right image and uh, delivering on the promise of we're giving you the California dream. Yeah. So here we have the main characters, uh, attractive people. They're in work and they get into a hot tub. Now, apparently, according to everybody, and this is a voyeuristic scene. Because the FBI and the watching, uh, federales yeah. slash uh, criminals are all watching this and they're yeah. reacting to it. They're all loosening their clothes and they're yeah. all like like um, trying to take each other's binoculars away from each other because they're watching porn. And yeah. this is in a hot tub and it's like, okay, that's that's a nice idea because you get steam and it's it's wet. And, yeah, it's, it's pretty image, and, but... Yes, and yeah. but the reality of it... I don't know, four hours in a hot yeah. tub? And that's awful. And you would be so... Um, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is not realistic. They are, no. I thought so too. I was it's, like, a, one, it's a hot tub, so you get dehydrated, right? Yeah. Because you're not drinking that water, you're in it, and it's hot, yeah. so you're dehydrating. That's yeah. one. Uh, and you uh, can I mean, get... I, and, but like, it gives off steam, and the steam is pretty, right? So you can show skin, but because of the steam, it's more translucent so you can get away with more and yeah, it's not they shoot it then, upside down steam, yeah. and, um, so you can see the mirror image and it's it's the the cinematography is really well done i mean they yeah, got nominated true. but i you don't buy it in yeah a you don't buy it with yeah. um the girl i just met and this is the first time you're going to be doing it and yeah. you don't know each other you i mean the last thing you want to do is like Put your elbow in the wrong place so uh, uh, you're hurting your hair. Yeah. And, you know, all that kind of stuff. But they're in there for four hours. Hours, yeah. But that's really a, an And this was scene. before pills, it's right? Like, yeah, this but was it, before they, get, they, they got those little blue pills so you would last. Yeah. So yeah. four hours, I was like, yeah. hey, and okay, they should not have shot that that way. They should have just said 40 minutes. 40 minutes? Yeah, it's fine. We can get It's long that. to be in a hot tub. Yeah. But I understand, okay, you get like uh, 10 minutes of foreplay and then 10 minutes of cuddling and some stuff in between. That would work. But four hours? No, no not no, in this no. universe. It was, yeah, but it, it's just... Uh, it's unhealthy. No, but they didn't care about the realistic aspect of it. They just no. wanted a nice shot and to to say something like, four hours, that's so hard. They were so hard. There. It's, it was amazing. You You just have like, yeah, no. And it's that was just not a normal hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> he's actually explaining that. Yeah. That it's not a normal hot tub. He's just explaining like technical details and everything, which is ironic. Weird. Be- yeah. Because that was, they didn't shoot it in a real hot tub anyway. And the problem with that was, I did, that's one of the, the trivia I wrote down. Okay. So this hot tub, um, it wasn't safe. It wasn't Hello? safe. It I was they had they, they had sp- I mean they got splinters and uh, oh, they got uh, skin rashes from the water because you know if if you're you're shooting that all day, right? Yeah, it's, it's like really not hard. it's not a five minute scene a five minute scene. No, no, you get and you get out and in and out and in and out and in. And you're and, cold yeah. and you're miserable yeah, and miserable. you have to get yeah it, and you have to have your hair water, done again. Yeah, you are miserable. And then it's lunchtime. Mm-hmm. It's brutal. So yeah. The actors were miserable. They had to stop principal photography for f- three to four days 
so they could rec recover. Probably because Michelle Pfeiffer just stalked offset and went straight to a skin uh, uh, to a skin physician and said, I "Yeah, yeah, I this. have a rash." Just I didn't want to go back anymore, yeah. and so they had to talk her into it. But no, it's it's if you think about it, just in terms of the character in a hot tub for four hours, you're looking at a urinary tract inf in in infection. infection at the very yeah. least, least, yeah, that's true. No, no, but that, that just, that's what don't I do said. this at it home is, boys and girls no don't do it please it's just it's not real it's just it's an hollywood scene it's like yeah yeah it's, it's, it's about just, image it's about image it's only about image they, they didn't give a uh f about no. if it was true or not it could be done or not just just yeah it's just for the pretty picture it's just yeah, yeah. And it, it seems to me like this is uh bragging rights at hollywood parties it's like yes i got kurt russell and Michelle Pfeiffer together, wet in a in a wine cellar. I yeah. got Mel Gibson and Michelle Pfeiffer naked together in a hot tub. Yeah, I am the shit in Hollywood. Look at yeah, what yeah. I did, right? Look what I look what I give you. This is it's, this is like more, yeah. um, Coke inspired uh, party points. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. No, I think you're right. And I think this, this type of thing, uh, it's like oh, it should have been so long to discuss. Uh, uh, contractual wise like I don't want you to see that I don't want to be seen like that I don't mm -hmm. want to, oh my god mm -hmm. that's a hazard yeah yeah because there's the old uh I don't want my nipple showing yeah and did, did did they use another body for her at some point when you don't see her face and stuff like that yeah it's... yeah stand in stuff like that yeah, I yeah. Mean, every scene in pretty woman uh yeah it's yeah is someone else it's someone else, yeah. You don't you don't actually see her body. That's that's a stand-in. No, no, no that, that's the idea of it. And yeah. rightfully so. Anywho, so okay, so here we have a love triangle. So I'm kind of curious because you know I don't podcast with women enough. What <laughs> is an effective female strategy in a love triangle? You have two guys, two alpha males who know each other coming after you. Yeah. Um, you get to pick because you're the pretty girl in the situation. What is an effective strategy here? But I think... Um, and they're both coming at you at the same time and they're yeah, not letting up. For me, it's not realistic. I mean, maybe, maybe it's just me, but um, you know which one you like. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you have... Just because they want you doesn't mean... That's what I don't like. One thing I don't like in this movie is just... Mm -hmm. you. They made you think that because they want her, she wants them. She mm -hmm. wants them. But why? I mean, well, they're they're Kurt Russell and Mel Gibson. That's a yeah. Or why? No, I don't think so. I think when you are when they're you, handsome, sexy, successful men. But and handsome, sexy, successful men for um, your taste. I mean, why? Why she couldn't? I, I don't know. I, I mean, it's for me. It's too strong from them and not enough from her. She's like, okay, there are two boys. Yeah, but that she want likes me, so I want them. She even says this. Yeah, but you're a very I, bad boy, Nick. And she says it in a certain way. It's like you're a very bad yeah. boy. And it's like she knows she's basically saying to herself, Oh no, oh no, this is another one. Oh boy, here I go. I'm wet. You know, that's basically the, the vibe you get. It's like because he's a bad boy, because he's not an honest cop. Yeah, but for me, that's too um on the nose. Yeah, that's too easy. That's that's just that doesn't give her any personality or credit. Like, okay, that's a woman. She loves a bad boy, a bad boy so she loves them both. Mm. No, 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 please. Just, she didn't I, resist either of them enough. Yeah, no, I just and she doesn't. You cannot feel which way she's going to go. It's like no, I, she doesn't have any personality. She doesn't. No, I I, I didn't buy it enough. So to I you, mean, she's like a Bond girl. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, automatically in girl. love with James Bond because yeah, he's James because Bond. yeah, because they are them, and you're like, yeah, but why? Yes, and she, if she, even if the Bond girl um, is critical and rejects James Bond, yeah, no problem. No, nah. Bond will have her anyway. Yeah, anyway, like even if she's just Grace say Jones. no, exactly, <laughs> exactly. No, but also my I favorite Bond girl, by the way. You you <laughs> noted. You don't know why she likes them just because they are bad boys. That's not enough. I mean, mm. it doesn't give her any she, personality. And yeah, no, it's it's too easy, too on the nose, too 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 small. To no, I, I just I I don't buy it. They, okay. they do, two boys arrive 
and you're like, okay, I like them because they're bad boys and pretty. Okay, they're pretty guy, but yeah, no. But I think when you are in a tree, 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 love, tri- love triangle, because I was going to say threesome, and that's not the same thing. It's not a threesome. No, 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 no. No, it's no. Not a threesome. She, no, <laughs> Michelle was not spit roasted. No, no, yeah. Okay, um, so it's not that kind of movie. If you're watching the yeah, Tequila Sunrise not... and someone gets spit roasted, you're you you basically downloaded the wrong movie. Yeah, I'm just uh, French speaking normally, so sorry for that. But no um, uh, yeah, you it would have been you would say menage à toi. Menage à toi, yeah. yeah. You you um. You you kind of have is there a difference there in France or is it just when two men are into you you just end up that way? Uh, but it's not it's not uh, two men into you. It's like you are into men and two men are into you. Yeah, like like you have to to be part of it. Mm-hmm. She she's for me she's not that part of it. I mean she okay. yeah. I didn't buy it. I don't know why. I just it was too. No, when I was watching the movie, I bought it because it was in the movie, and I was like, "Okay, I." I yeah, well, I decided basically to in the movie, movie, she tries out both of them. Yeah, she it's tries like, out Nick, and okay, I like, Nick mm. doesn't cut it because he's a wimp. Mm-hmm. He showed weakness, and she yeah. wants strong, uh, uh, threatening, dangerous bad yeah, boys. Yeah. And Nick is, in the end, he's a goody two shoes, so she's yeah. not interested anymore. You can tell. Because at some point he's like, well, okay, I lied to you, but I lied to you because blah blah blah. She doesn't yeah. even want to listen. It's like I don't no. care. It's like you lied to me you ineffectually, yeah. so you know you are no, I no longer hold you in any kind yeah. of esteem, right? Yeah. So then there's the uh, uh, drug dealer, and she knows he's a drug dealer because she's she's known that ever since he came in. It's like I know who yeah, my customers she, are. Yeah, she she sees that. Yeah. And I'm still giving you nice food. You're getting special dishes. And I'm sort of sort of hinting all the time. And, you know, yeah. so she's like, I'm not a first the old uh, bad boy here. So he gets the pass. But he doesn't yeah, but get- you know, what bothered me, is, sorry, is that um, hmm. she, you can feel that she's into them, even when she doesn't know anything about them. It's And, and, and that doesn't change in the way of, so she's projecting something. Yeah, it, it doesn't. But we don't go... get to know what exactly. And she that's... never talks about daddy. Yeah, or daddy, or the ex, or something else. Yeah. It's just too, too plain, too. Yeah. Yeah, there's no motivation like for that. her character. Yeah, exactly. But that's her character. Is it's written like that? Yeah, because Pete, basically Robert Towney doesn't understand women and doesn't care no. about their motivation. They're no, they, there they, they, to be yeah. desired. Exactly. Yeah, maybe he's gay. She, Maybe. Could be. But she California saying she's into them because they are bad boys, writing her that way, it's like so boring, so easy. So like you, you didn't put any thought into her. Yeah, this like is the any, 80s. Yeah, really. That's that's it. That's no it. no thought about it. Yes. So that's really the weakness of the movie, I think. Yeah, I think so yeah. too. Aside from that, it's fun. No, it's it's a fun watch. It's fun. I wouldn't watch it uh, a second time. Like, I mean, if someone said, "Hey, I didn't see it," would you watch it with me? I wouldn't. I think, uh, but it was a, a one thing, a, a nice watch to watch like this. Yeah, and also because you have you you watch it with a little bit of nostalgia for mm-hmm. those years, those movie years. Right. They have that vibe, and I like that vibe. So yeah. So do I. That's why I make a podcast about it. Really. <laughs> yeah. Now, because I'm not into Marvel. Mm. I am into Marvel, but not all of them. But um, yeah, well, they the lost early, me some Marvel time. Is okay, but yeah, Marvel, nah, not so much. <laughs> okay, I get that. so I think that's that's about it. I think that's the movie. Yeah, uh, that's all of it. <laughs> closing thoughts. Um, but what I just said, I mean, if I would have to summarize, I would say it's a nice watch. Um, Mel Gibson is um, is great and uh, Kurt too uh, little bit um, of a miss about uh, Michelle Pfeiffer wall even mm. if she is what she is so she is beautiful but it just kind of stops there yeah that's um, all she is that's all she is she, she could have been a mannequin she could have been a blow yeah, up doll yeah exactly she could be she's just that and okay good for her but that's a little bit uh sad for for my point of view yeah. and i think the the movie is a little bit slow to would you want to, this part um i would want the money 
the, uh... <laughs> okay so there you have michelle pfeiffer's motivation yeah that's no but to be honest I, i would probably do it because i would love to have the um yeah the money and the exposition to mm -hmm. be playing with those two guys and to meet them and to meet um to 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 have yeah the exposition because in this in this work of field you have to be known and with a movie like that you will probably have a lot of red carpet and stuff and so you would be in in that really close circle and full time and that would probably lead to other projects so mm -hmm. i would do it to be honest okay. but um i would be a little bit uh, disappointed about my my character mm. But it wouldn't be a lot of work. I would have just to show up, let them do my makeup and stuff and be like, yeah, I, I want you. Oh, no, I want you. And then be done. So if you you have to take it for what it is. It's mm -hmm. not a movie I would do for uh, my intellect or for uh, um, wanted to uh, portray something important or be part of something important. It's a mm -hmm. movie I would do just for the money and for um, having uh, one uh, foot on the door uh, in a circle. I would want to work with people uh, that they are well known and when you can ask for more money then and then you can mm -hmm. meet new people and stuff. But I wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, give something more to my life except that. <laughs> Well, Which is nice, poster, you have to... I actually yeah. had this poster on my wall when I was a kid. Yeah. The poster is out there forever. Yeah, I think that's the poster true. is more important than the movie. And she's in the center of the po of the poster and you mm. see her and you know she... And, and it's sad that she's the only woman, kind of only woman in the movie mm -hmm. because it's, it's telling something about how it was written and how it is. Mm. But for her, that's great because you know she is more in exposure. it. More you, yeah, more exactly. More exposure, more scene, and you you're like, who was in that movie? And you always say uh, one girl and and the guy, and you say her name, so you know that's her. And, and that's, to me, this kind of felt like a, a Brigitte Bardot movie or Marilyn Monroe mm, movie or a Rebecca Welch movie. Where yeah, the, the, the the poster girl. Yeah, the poster girl who is the center of the movie, but it's the character actors who make it work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what's next for you? What do you mean? <laughs> well, in terms of uh, what are your acting goals? Because you're uh, a leading actress. You just uh, c completed the movie. It's yeah, out. It will it's probably out. be streaming at some point. Well, um, uh, okay, so there's, so. An, there's an English title because I think it's a French movie, right? It's a, a la... French movie, A La Folie. Uh, okay. in, in English, it's uh, By Your Side. Okay. It's called By Your Side from Audrey Estrugo. That's the mm -hmm. name of the director. And... Um, Uh, for me, I, I hope to get more part. I am doing casting and stuff, but I'm really uh, like, uh, um, I don't have my foot on the door, like you say, uh, mm. like I said for Michelle Pfeiffer <laughs> yet, uh, but I'm I'm trying to, I'm trying to, but it, they, they, that's a job when you have a lot of um, people wanting to be there and uh, not a lot to, to, not a lot of people to be able to work. Not that enough much. project, too many, too many competition. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, uh, but I'm I'm just hoping for good stuff to come and trying to. And if if not, I will find them myself. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So well, that's, nice. that's about it for this episode. Yeah. Thank you thank so you much so for much. joining. Thank you so much for discussing this movie with me and uh, thank you providing for your wonderful me. insights. Thank you. It was really nice to 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 do. I was really happy to. It's my first podcast, so I really liked it. Yeah, yeah. And it must be kind of strange to do it in English, where normally you would do it in French. Yeah, it was kind of strange, but it's good practice. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening. Bye-bye for now. Thank you. Bye.